Hey guys, welcome back to the Real Vermonter YouTube channel. Today we're gonna to be doing repairs on this $1,000 Subaru. So it needs all four brakes. It needs this windshield. I'm probably gonna have the windshield shop do this windshield instead of me doing it myself. I've done windshield before, but uh, might as well have the shop do it. If it's not too much labor. If it is too much labor, then I'll do it myself. But it needs all four rotors and pads for sure. It's really grinding bad. Uh, and then we're gonna take it through a drive cycle because it had five engine light codes last time and I cleared them. They haven't come back on yet, but I haven't completed a drive cycle. So we're gonna see if they do come back on or whether it was just the weak battery that was causing them. I guess let's get started with the brakes though. So it's actually pretty rusty under, under this car. There's no holes or anything, but for a 2010, it's pretty rusty. So uh, I'll show you that guys that when I get it jacked up. Yeah, definitely a little rusty up here for a 2010, but we'll put this new brake on. So for some reason, my camera kept dying because of the heat out here. Uh, it is pretty hot. It just kept saying overheating, but I got this brake all done and on. Um, so we'll have to move on to the other side now. My stupid iPhone can't handle the heat and it keeps cutting out, but I greased the slider pins, put everything on. Passenger side done. Okay, coming down to do the back brakes. I just noticed this. PZEV, partial zero emissions vehicle. What? I don't, that doesn't sound right. This is a gas car. Somehow does this give off zero emissions? That doesn't make any sense. That sounds like false advertising. Somebody explain in the comments. Cause I'm confused. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, jack the car up and start working. Back one's on. Parking brake mechanism definitely looked rusty, but it's still working. Three done and one to go. Okay, brakes are done, all four. All right, one more day on working on this. I'm gonna do the drive cycle today, see if the engine light stays off. So I was taking it on the drive cycle and I could tell one of the calipers is sticking pretty bad. So we're gonna have to bring it back and uh, definitely replace one of those calipers because this is not good. Yeah, it's definitely sticking. So that's hot. Um, even the driver's side is sticking a little bit. So we're gonna have to buy two new calipers and put them on, unfortunately. Okay, we're gonna have to do the caliper now. So I got the wheel off. There's the new caliper. Pop this old one off, switch them out. Okay, so the old caliper is off, thanks to Beetle. And uh, where do I put the new one? There's the new one. It's gonna go right on there. There's the new caliper on and the line attached to clean it up a little and uh, go to the other side now. 
So let's get this tire off of here first. Tire's off, now we're gonna take the caliper off. Got the old caliper out, and gonna transfer the pads into the new one, then uh, put the new one on. Passenger caliper on, <clears throat> I'll clean it up, and now all you have to do is uh, bleed the system. So, looking good. So we're bleeding the brakes now. Don't have any fluid at this line quite yet. Oh, there we go, we're getting a little bit. Oh, you can see there's plenty of air in it. We're just gonna go ahead and continue with this. We're getting a steadier stream now, we're almost there. As you guys can see, it's a little milky, but getting there. Pump. Brakes are all bled, I'll put these tires back on and uh, should be all good to go. All right, test drive number two and it is working well, finally. Pretty steep hill, hit the brakes. No steering wheel shake, no shutter. And they're not sticking. So, needed new calipers as well. But now that we got them on, she's driving great. Just taking her on the interstate to go get my refund for the uh, old calipers, the core charge. And uh, it does drive, for, on the interstate it feels really nice. It's actually very quiet and smooth. And I like the way the CVT acts on the interstate. On the roads up to the interstate, it feels really cheap and bad because uh, every time you gas it or slow down, it kind of wobbles. It's like chugga, 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 chugga with the CVT. But on the interstate, it feels really nice. I'm gonna go get the core refund and then we're gonna get that windshield replaced. Then we'll see if this thing will pass inspection. But uh, yeah, suspension wise and comfort quiet wise, it's very nice on the interstate. Just arrived at Safe Light Auto and I'll have them replace that windshield. So Safe Light just did the windshield, it looks good. Cost four hundred dollars. Yeah, it's kind of expensive, but uh, I really didn't want to do it myself. So anyway, now that the uh, windshield and uh, brakes are done and the calipers and everything, it should be ready for an inspection. But we'll just double check the uh, OBD2 system. We'll read it. Uh, current DCTs, no fault codes, pending none <clears throat> and then we can check the readiness of all the stuff so in vermont you're allowed to have three not ready but if you look here it's gone through the misfire monitor and it says it's okay and we have no misfire code so hopefully that doesn't come back on i'm hoping that was just the battery and everything else is okay the only thing that's incomplete is the evap system which takes a while to to do so uh this thing is all set i'm gonna bring it into the shop and let's see if it passes so I took the Subaru into the shop and it passed inspection. Yay, all it needed was new low beams. Um, so just did those and it passed. Cleaned it up a little bit too, so now hopefully it's a little shinier. Uh, might be hard to tell on camera, but I'll put some pictures in to show you the finished product <clears throat> once I shine it up a little more. Anyway, I'm glad it did that. And I also got it undercoated for the next person. So uh, hopefully it that'll extend the life of it a little more. But if you can see under there, a lot of you always ask me in the comments, you should undercoat all your vehicles. So there you go. Finally did. Um, I think they, I had them do it. It was $139, so it's not cheap but it looks like they did a really good job of it because it, uh, it's that oily stuff and I think that'll extend the life of the vehicle. So that's gonna bring the Subaru Saga to a close. For those of you interested, because I had some commenters ask how much you sell these things for when you're done, I'll probably sell this for around $5,000 and uh, I have $2,000 into it. So it'll be a nice, it'll be a nice little profit. As previously stated, the uh, People who sold it to me said that it would need $2,500 worth of work to pass inspection. So we we came in under that um, by doing the work ourselves or myself. That's pretty sweet. I'm happy with how it turned out. It runs and drives pretty well. And uh, I hope the next owner has it for a long time. But thank you for watching this video, guys. And uh, stay tuned for next week when we start working on the Duramax. Well, editing this video, it looks like I still have a few more seconds before I reach that 10 minute mark, which I try to aim for in these videos. Um, so in that time, I'm just gonna give you a couple of channel updates and you can stay around if you're interested or not. I'll just go through all the cars that I have and the plans for them. So first the Subaru, which you guys just saw, everybody knows that. Next, we got this Colorado. 
This one I can't update you on yet because it's a future video and I don't want to give you any spoilers. This is a, another Subaru I bought just for my uh, sister because she has been driving. This van, you guys know this van. This is the $400 grease mobile I got three years ago with 80,000 miles. It now has 110. Uh, the only reason she's switching vehicles to that Subaru, which by the way, there won't be a video on that Subaru um, because it's in good shape, but I did get it for a really good deal. The only reason she's switching is because uh, this is not all-wheel drive, that is, and uh, this is a little bit too rusty for Vermont inspection, so it's better to be legal. Um, also, it left her stranded. The first time it like actually left her stranded was a couple of days ago, so that's kind of an indicator of the point where it's time to probably get her a little better of a vehicle because... You don't want to be stranded. But anyway, you know, it's rusty and everything. And stuff's starting to fall off of it. Still, I'm going to keep the van for a while longer because it's great for road trips and everything. But uh, it'll be mine again and uh, not my sister's. Inside, though, mint. Oh, the sister was getting energized. It's got the seats and everything. Interior's really nice. Still going strong. Now we move on to the Fords. I had that 64 Ford Thunderbird. I ended up selling that. Um, so that is no longer on the channel. And then this, the Ford Taurus, I haven't listed this up for sale yet, but it's about ready to go up. Uh, I repaired this one after it got into a front end wreck and, uh, I'm probably going to list it for 800 to a thousand dollars. Next, we got the Bounder that's just sitting there. I haven't done much with it, but it just lives there. Um, still runs and drives fine, but it's been sitting a while. Here is my daily driver right now currently um but soon it's going to be going in for repairs like i said that should be next week's video be repairs on this beast here and you'll see that uh that back body that'll be in the next video too i love this truck and last but not least we got toad just lives back here i drive it probably once a week um but next week i'll also or maybe two weeks from now i'll do a video because i got to pick up a bunch of stone um, for my house and for a neighbor. So this is going to be getting a lot of work in next week. We'll see if it, see how well it does, but it's at 340,000 miles and, uh, it's also still going strong. Anyway, there was that update for you guys, for those of you who are interested in the fleet. Um, but yeah, we got a lot of stuff coming your way. So stay tuned, subscribe. I'll see you next week.